My name is Jamie Patrick Clomp, JPK. So I think we're off to a good start here. In 2019, I had this awesome idea where I would drop my professional career in human resources, which I've been doing for the last 25 or so years, and start fresh as a comedian. Because obviously there has to be a lot of success stories where people transition into the entertainment business and are highly successful right away. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna be okay here. But I didn't really know where to start besides a few people laughing at my jokes. How am I gonna measure up to other people? So I Googled how to be a comedian and the first thing that popped up was a lot of funny people and a lot of talented people. So maybe the bar was a little bit higher than expected. But I wasn't uh, upset at this moment. But I got to think, well, how am I gonna be funny? There has to be an answer for that. So right back onto the Google, a lot of information. And the first thing it says is that you have to be relatable. Well, this completely threw me off guard. It threw me off guard because in 2020, I'm looking at all the memes and the memes are telling me I'm allowed to be an individual, I'm allowed to be unique, I'm allowed to have my own thoughts and experiences, but now to be successful as a comedian, I need to be relatable, I need to be like everyone else. I got to thinking, you know what? I can be relatable. This shouldn't be too much of a challenge. I, I've made mistakes. Mistakes, a whole laundry basket full of mistakes. So I picked one out. Right after I graduated, I had no experience. So the idea was to print out a resume, go business to business, introduce myself, and hopefully get a job. First business I actually went into, I said, I'm Jamie. I work in the field of human resources. I'm looking for a job. They happen to be hiring. I was interviewed that day. And next day, I'm actually working in my field. That's how it should work for a graduate. So things were actually working out for JPK. I didn't really talk like that, but just for the comedic sense of it all, things are working out for JPK. So the first day of the job, I'm sitting there, I'm not even logged into my computer yet, when the manager comes in the door and says, listen, Jamie, I'm gonna need you to fire Mary. So I'm a little, little concerned at this time, but it's a big task. So in human resources, we have to hire people, train people, and sometimes fire people. It's a sad part of the job, but it's part of the job. So I was up to this challenge. So I called Mary in my office. I told her, unfortunately, we had to let her go, and she went on her way. I had a proud sense of accomplishment, not because she was terminated, but because I did something that's challenging for most folks. So later that afternoon, the manager calls me in my office and says, Jamie, how did the meeting with Mary go? And I said, well, yeah, no real problem. Here's the notes, Mary's no longer with us. So the manager sort of does, takes me to 180 in the chair, points me out to like the area where all the employees are working at, points to a woman and says, well, why is Mary still with us? Well, I fired the wrong person on my first day. So the manager does the 180, swings me looking face to face and says, listen, I can give you two options. Option A is to take this as a life lesson or option B, I can fire you right now. Well, I said, well, option A, please, obviously that's the route I want to take. So, you know, big mistake, I guess. I have a tendency to get judgmental. And not judgmental on the bigger things of life. I sort of sweat the small things. I get judgmental on people that do things that really shouldn't matter. So for example, I have this cousin Johnny. And for the last two previous holidays, Johnny always says the same thing. You know what, Jamie? We haven't seen each other all year. We only see each other once at this Christmas party. We gotta get together more. You know, we're gonna have dinner sometime in the new year. And then I go home and I wait January, February, March, the year rolls long and no dinner invite, no small talk, no awkward conversations, no updates on the kids. So I get extremely frustrated. So as the dinner's approaching this year, and I'm annoying everyone in my house and I'm telling them I know it, absolutely know what Johnny's up to, this invisible dinner invite. And it's not gonna happen. I'm gonna put a, a blockade on this. So it comes the day of the party. I step in the door and the first guy to greet me is Johnny. And I know it's coming. It's the typical line. The invite is coming, but I stop him in those tracks. And I'm like, Johnny, don't do it. Don't give me this false pretense that you're gonna invite me to some conversation that's never gonna happen. Johnny obviously is a normal person, so has no idea what I'm talking about. And the first thing I tell Johnny, hey, listen, what are you gonna tell me? Do it, just do it. He says, well, it's nice to see you. You know, we haven't seen each other in a long time. Boom, out comes my cell phone. Boom, out comes the online reservations at Cracker Barrel. And Johnny is locked in for January the 21st. The list grows. I get obsessed over the weirdest things that really take away from the big picture. So a couple of years ago, I purchased the newest vehicle I've ever owned, a 2016 Chevy Cruze. Sure, it was a year old, but I had saved up for it, didn't have to take a loan, and it had this vehicle that I loved. But it had the smallest, finest scratch on the rear 
bumper or whatever you call it that really sort of got to me. And what are people going to think of me? Like he can only get 98.5% of the job done, but he's got to get something with some malfunction. Am I going to be driving down the road and people, you know, they look at you when you got a Chevy Cruze. That's a sense of success here in Canada. But are they going to be micromanaging the scratch thinking this guy almost made it. He tripped right at the end before completing the marathon. So I got to worry about it. But then I dreamt. I dreamt about a scratchless vehicle. And I woke up in the morning, I ran outside to see if that came true, and it didn't. The scratch was still there. So it really got in my mind. The celebration of purchasing the vehicle was over. So I sprinted right down to the Dollar General and I purchased every microfiber cloth that they had in stock. Now I got 57 of them. I'm scrubbing, I'm sweeping, I'm dipping, I'm diving. I'm trying to get rid of that scratch. Boom, 98 scratches. I'm gonna blame the next one on my upbringing. See, my dad was never into hunting, fishing, camping, fixing cars. Instead, we were into cosmetics. So I was a real hit of humiliation on these hockey tournaments where the rest of the boys would have their, you know, their ax deodorant and spray, but I would have the whole cosmetic thing laid out throughout the hotel bathroom. So they really loved teasing me about that. So growing up, cosmetics and how you looked, I guess, was kind of important. It was cemented in my head. So I really worried about you know, what are people gonna think of me when I'm bald? Is that gonna throw them off? Sure, he takes care of his skin, but the hair, the hair makes you look different than a lot of people. So I like to warn people when they first meet me because I wanna showcase the bald immediately. So what I do is the first step of three, I do about a 10 degree turn here and I tell them, listen, you're gonna see something that's a little bit different, but mostly you see this forehead, it's just gonna continue right to the back. They don't care, but then I do the second of the third turn. I'm saying, are you really ready for this? There's a lot of gleam, there's shine. I'm really gonna stick out here and oh boop the third step the bald head throws out they don't care they already knew I was bald in my mind I thought it was gonna surprise them or shock them the most common response I get well at least your head is not shaped like an egg so all these years I should have been celebrating the eggless head there's nothing wrong with being average. You know, growing up, my parents would go to these teacher interviews and the teacher would always say the same thing. You know, Jamie would be an A plus student if he would just put in more effort. But I always thought, you know, why stress out and get an A when you can relax and get a C? But that carried on later on in life. I was thinking about it this winter. You know, I'm a homeowner here in Canada. And we have these driveways and we get a lot of snow. And if you're not on top of the snow removal, you're completely finished. Forget about accessing your house. So I'm thinking the first time it snows, I'm gonna shovel. The next time it snows, I'm gonna shovel. I'm really gonna remain on top of it. But as the winter months go by, you skip a day, then the snow freezes, and all of a sudden you got these ski moguls in your driveway. Forget about having a muffler if you're gonna try and drive into your house. So I'm not gonna worry about that because the moguls, they can't be removed. I'm just gonna skip driving altogether. Then all of a sudden the snow compresses on the side and instead of having a nice wide driveway, you have a house that you can't even walk into and you completely failed again. So there it is, relatability. Did it make you laugh? Might need some therapy after this one. But until next time, stay unique.